that's the tree I was talking about the other day or in a previous vlog which you may be seeing before this one it's the the horse chestnut and it is where's my finger that's stretching out to here practically where the wisteria is and it, it's crossing over the road as well and it definitely needs looking at oh, Mark can do the bottom bit possibly but I think it needs the help of a tree surgeon it's quite busy here today it's um there's a big tractor being up and down I'll just show you my hot red hot pokers Mark's been in the hammock just now we've been out for a meal in Chauvigny picked up our shopping and now we're home and he's been in the hammock and had a siesta I sort of had a siesta till Mark came through the door and that was the end of that so yes it's quite busy there's been a tractor up and down there's um the small blue house up the road um pretty house that lots of people wanted um I don't know that our neighbor Manuel talked about the guy that lives there was um you're going to put in a, a chemin, a path around the back to come out, uh, to have a different way out onto the road. I don't know why. I don't know what's wrong with the one that's there. I think that's probably what's going on. So the tractor's, there's a digger road up the road and then um, a tractor with a big, um, you know, big trailer on the back full of earth has been coming up and down. So that's quite busy. We've had... Um, We've had our local, one of our local builders in, the, the builders that did this roof, to do a quote for the volet, the, the shutters, and um, the ceilings indoors. Um, this sort of work is not fast in France, you know, getting people to come in and do a, a devi, a quote, and um, it certainly doesn't happen in May. Um, we we were we began the process in May, but of course May has six thousand bank holidays, so um, yeah, nothing happened. But Pascal Gipier was here this morning, and he called in the other guy who we spoke to. Apparently, they they sort of collaborate. Um, one of them do will do one bit, and one of them will do the other. So that's fine. They're talking to each other, and they'll give us quotes for that. Um, we're still waiting for the Mark's mum's house to sell in the UK. We've had news about that this morning. There may be yet another offer going through. Um, uh, Mark's nephew has shaken hands on the deal with somebody this morning. Well, yeah, when somebody shakes hands on a deal, it does. I'm not convinced. I want to say, yeah, show me your money. We'll see. Be nice if it goes through. Be nice if it goes through and we can begin some work at the end of the year because, um, it, it can all wait. The, the the shutters can wait. Oh, here comes the cat. She's going to think I'm talking to her. She thinks I'm only out here for her. Oh, it's mum. No, she's going to settle down. She's hot. Um. Yeah, the shutters can wait. The ceilings can wait. It's just that it would be nice to feel that we're beginning to do some things in the house that need doing. Um. The shutters are so old. I can't, rem you know, trying to remember again how old they are. They were here when we came and we've been here almost 16 years in November somebody was asking about saying that they want to move to France and how to do it am I going in the I'm under the umbrella because it is really hot I think I'm getting going dark and light um and how to do it and I was thinking about well how did we do it and back then there wasn't a Facebook there was no Facebook there were forums and there were there were probably a couple of for, French forums that I was on um, that you know are no longer there but it preceded Facebook and now what you have are Facebook groups and I'm sure if you searched on Facebook that you would find groups on there where you can ask the questions that you need to ask um, the forum that I was on or the forums that I were on were great because they were they had subjects so you could sort of look into the the, the posts about certain subjects and that was really helpful because you could read through them and you could ask questions and or you could find answers that had already been questions that had already been posed that was really helpful um but i'm sure that you'll find facebook groups i think that one of the well, several things and i'm sure they'll come to mind as i'm talking but one thing i do remember was that it hadn't 
it just hadn't registered how big France is. I think it's difficult when, I mean, it depends on where you're coming from. I was coming from a small island. The UK is a small island and um, it's difficult to register how much, how big France is. And I had a map on my wall when we lived in Devon. I had a map on my wall and we were sort of focusing our search around a sort of a triangle between um, a, an auto route and a, a route nationale and um, thinking about airports and accessibility for traveling for family coming here and us going there and um, on my map which I didn't know the scale of it looked really small the, tri the triangle I was looking at but it wasn't in real life so we were looking at this triangle and actually have moved much further um, north of that triangle um, we we went to um, look at the Creuse, the Creuse, which, and Corrèze, which um, I don't know whether they are now, but back then were the cheapest, the cheapest place to go. And that's where we started looking, but it just didn't seem right for us. The Corrèze was too, um, I'm going to say barren, but barren makes it sound like it didn't have vegetation and, and whatever i mean it was you know you can imagine it was really green and there were lots of fields and it was more forested i think Corez than here but a different sort of forest it was sort of more pine forest more um a sort of i'm going to say alpine just to give you a, an impression of the type of forestry that's there compared to what, what we have here is more deciduous um but it just yeah the, it didn't it didn't fit for us it felt too barren too empty um, and we wanted quiet and we wanted to be away from uh, you know sort of large conglomerations of people but we didn't want to be so away from and, and to, so distant and, and that's how it felt and I mean obviously it's where we were and there must have been places in Carez that weren't so um, uh, isolated but it, we felt isolated the bit that we looked at so we traveled this way we traveled back to this way because this is where we had come the year before on a, on a house exchange and, and as we got within 20 kilometers of here it began to feel more normal for us and it was like yes this is this feels how we want it feels like the France that we want to live in as you go further south of us you'll come to buildings that have lots more buildings that are lower with canal tiles um, that's less so up here you do get some roofs with canal tiles i love canal tiles i would have loved a roof with canal tiles but they're more um Chiron, uh, charontes type properties so down in the Chiron, Chiron maritime um, and all around that area you get the canal tiles and the lower lower um, the lower the style buildings um so yeah facebook groups i would suggest you look at you know do some searches on facebook do lots of research know where you want to be know what sort of climate you want to live in work out whether you can afford it um you know whether you can afford to support yourself because when we came we didn't obviously we had to support ourselves but we could get into the health system and it, there was a reciprocal arrangement between the UK and France. Um, so anybody living, moving from France to the UK would be paid for and likewise this way around. And, and that ended, I, I think, um, that ended with Brexit. I don't know for sure because we were already out of that by Brexit because of being naturalised, which means we're in the French system anyway because we're French. Um, so yeah, you need to know that you can afford your um, medical expenses and you need to have enough money to support yourself. Um, you need to be able to speak the language. And I think far more now than before, um, if you want to apply for um, a carte de séjour, I think there's going to be um, some sort of language requirement, which there wasn't before. So you could get a carte de séjour, a ten, like a 10 year, um, permission to stay um, without proving you could speak French. I don't think that that's how it is now. And I've, I've, if it is like that now, I have, think I've heard or read that that's going to change. So what else do you need to do? How else do you need to do it? Uh, 
you need to know why you're coming i think i think you really need to think hard about why am i doing this because it's it's not easy to um remove yourself from your comfort zone and move yourself into a a foreign country um where the the culture is different the rules are different the understanding of life is different um it, it's not an easy thing to it's not an easy thing to do and if you've come to escape something um you're not going to be able to do that you know because quite often quite often or often people will move to move away from or escape from um, crap that's happening to them over in the country that they're living in but actually quite often we bring that with us it's like stuff we're carrying inside rather than something external so um, you know it, it, that's not a good reason to to be coming um, we found a company that did Anglo-French removals. That's something that you would need to find. That's something you'd find in a Facebook group. Um, what else? I think it would be good who the person that asked me those questions. That question is, you know, ask me questions under this. What do you want to know rather than me making assumptions about what you do know and telling you what I know because I only know a little I only know about my experience I don't know about everybody else's experience of moving and um, things may have changed or will have changed since we moved so um, yeah ask me questions and look for groups on Facebook and um, of which there are plenty I'm sure you know lots of French based groups that you'll find so I'm a bit bereft, my laptop is not working and I'm lost without it. Well, I'm not lost without it. I do have a tablet and I do have a phone and, and quite often people just have a phone or have a, just have a tablet and I'm, but I have never completely transferred to a tablet. I much prefer sitting at a laptop with a mouse and working at a laptop so when i'm doing my vlogs and the youtube stuff and sorting all that out i prefer to sit with the mouse at the laptop and trying to fiddle around with it on my on my tablet is um frustrating it's it's a first world problem i know um i've got um rob smith it coming on wednesday morning so he'll probably mend it for me and um He's already seen inside it because Mark opened it up yesterday to have a look and um, I videoed that for Mark's Tales from the Bunker vlog. Um, and he cleaned it and did some stuff and whatever, but it's still doing what it does, which means I can use it for three minutes and then it starts making a noise and I have to shut it down. So I'm hoping that Rob can resolve it when he comes on Wednesday and that I can at least limp it along till later this year because I sort of... I did talk about getting an iMac and I then said that I wasn't going to get one because um, I don't know I said that I wasn't going to get one but I think if I replace the laptop with another laptop I might be disappointed that I hadn't actually whilst I could afford to get an iMac so I'm going to hopefully limp my laptop through till the end of the year and see where we're at so I'm feeling a bit um, lost but meanwhile, I'm playing games. One of my games is still not working, so I'm playing SimCity Build It and getting terrible neck ache from playing, which is really bad, isn't it? I'm getting neck ache, but not stopping playing the game. Anyway, that's it from me. And I'm going to go back in. It's actually cool under here, under the umbrella. But I'm going to go back in to play my game. Okay, take care.